Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. The Earth is an incredible place. Seen from space, it's easy to understand why it's sometimes called the blue planet. The fact that nearly 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, along with the way light passes through its atmosphere, gives it the appearance of a big blue marble moving through space. It moves silently, of course, and from this distance, its surface appears perfectly smooth. From this distance, it is smooth. We know, of course, that the Earth is covered with mountains and valleys, as well as canyons and hills, but it certainly looks smooth. Did you know that if the Earth were shrunk down to this size, it would be smoother than this pool ball? Oh, it's wow. true. Even though the surface of the Earth is covered with high mountains and deep oceans, it would appear smoother than this ball. But the Earth isn't the size of this pool ball. And regardless of how it looks from space, it's not smooth. The Earth is covered with landforms and waterforms, such as mountains and valleys and oceans and rivers. Landforms are features that cover the Earth's surface. They are both above and below the surface of the water. Sometimes we refer to landforms as terrain. There are many different types of landforms or terrain. Mountains, plains, and valleys, those are all landforms. Landforms come in different sizes. Some are huge and some are pretty small. The largest landforms are called continents. Oh, wow. Continents are really, really large, continuous land masses. I mean, they are really large. They cover around 30% of the surface of the Earth. There are a few different ways to divide them up, but we often say there are seven continents. From largest to smallest, they are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, and Australia. While we're talking about really big things, let's also look at some water forms. A water form is just a body of water. The largest ones are called oceans. Again, there are different ways to divide them, but we often see them as a list of five. There's the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. There's also the Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. When you compare them to continents, other landforms really start to appear a lot smaller, but some can still be huge. For example, mountains such as these are landforms. Mountains take up thousands of square miles and can reach nearly six miles up into the air. Did you get that? Mountains can reach nearly six miles oh, wow. up into the air. It's easy to think that nothing can take up as much space as a mountain range because they are huge. But another huge landform that can take up just as much room is a plane. By some measures, the Great Plains regions of the United States 
takes up around a half a million square miles. That's more area than is covered by the entire Rocky Mountain region. Plateaus are sort of a combination of mountains and plains. A plateau is a large, flat region surrounded by slopes. Plateaus can be very large as well. The Cumberland Plateau is part of the Appalachian Mountain Range and extends across parts of Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. We can see how there are landforms that are really, really big, yet are still smaller than continents. In the same way, there are water forms that are smaller than oceans, yet still take up huge areas. This picture is of a map of the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes are the largest group of lakes on Earth. If you're talking about their surface area, rivers can also be really large. The Mississippi River stretches from the state of Minnesota to Louisiana. That is more than 2,000 miles. Oh, wow. As we start to look at smaller landforms and smaller water forms, we can see there are many different kinds. Like mountains, hills are landforms that are higher than the land surrounding them. But they're not nearly as big. Lakes can also be smaller. Unlike the Great Lakes, many lakes are small enough for you to see across them. There are many other types of landforms. This is a valley, a low area surrounded by mountains or hills. A canyon is similar to a valley, but the sides of it are much steeper. A saddle is a low area between two hills. Bays are coastal bodies of water connected to an ocean or a lake. The land around them shelters them from the waves and other effects of the ocean or lake. There are many kinds of landforms. Now, let's take a look at how landforms are made. How did a mountain form? How did the Grand Canyon form? Hmm, what about rivers and lakes? Perhaps you know that the scientific definition of force is an influence that can change the motion of an object. Force can cause something to move or to stop moving. It can speed up or slow down a moving object. Force is usually referred to as a push or a pull. And force is what creates landforms. There are two types of forces that create land and water forms. One type of force is constructive force. Think about the word construct. That word means to make something. That's what a constructive force is. A force that makes something that wasn't there before. The other type of force that creates landforms is destructive force. Think about the word destruct. That means to destroy or tear down something. A destructive force makes a landform by taking away earth material. As you can imagine, it takes a lot of force to create something like a mountain or a canyon. It takes a lot of force and usually it takes a lot of time. With just a few exceptions, constructive and destructive forces act slowly, very slowly. Let's look at constructive forces. Remember, construct means to make something that wasn't there before. One of the most dramatic constructive forces is a volcano. To understand a volcano, it's important to know how the Earth is put together. The Earth has a few layers and all of them are different. The outer layer of the Earth is called the crust because, well, <laughs> it's like a crust. It's hard and solid, made of rock and with a thin covering of soil. Below that is the mantle. The mantle is mostly solid, but its outer layer is molten and can move freely. Below the mantle is the core. The core is usually described as being two parts, the outer and inner core. Okay, back to the volcano. A volcano occurs where there is an opening in the crust. The opening might be a rupture in the crust, or it might be where two tectonic plates come together. Tectonic plates are large sections of the Earth's crust that sort of float on the mantle. When the material in the mantle is allowed to escape between or through the plates, it comes to the surface as a lava. Above ground, it's called lava. 
Below ground, it's called magma. Cooled lava is a type of rock, and the collected lava can form huge mountains. The Hawaiian Islands are examples of landforms, mountains, and hills that were formed by volcanoes. This picture of famous Waikiki Beach shows the Diamond Head Crater in the background. It's inactive now. That crater allowed molten rock to escape from below the Earth, helping to form the island of Oahu. Volcanic eruptions are an example of a constructive force. An opening occurred between the plates in the Pacific Ocean, lava came out and collected, and the Hawaiian Islands were formed. Yay for volcanoes! Another constructive force is sediment deposition. Let's break that down. Sediment is nothing more than tiny pieces of rock. Sand is an example of sediment. Sand is literally tiny pieces of rock. But there are particles even smaller than sand. Sediment. Sediment is carried by wind or water from one place to another. As the sediment is carried, it is deposited where it starts to collect with other sediment. Deposition deposited. Deposition deposited. Sediment deposition is the result of tiny pieces of rock or sediment that are carried someplace and deposited there. In this picture, you can see how material is collecting at the mouth of this river. The land is expanding out into the lake. This is the result of sediment deposition. Sediment deposition also forms islands like these barrier islands. Many of the hills and mountains of Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee were formed millions of years ago, when sands settled before hardening into sandstone. Earlier, I talked about the layers of the Earth. I said that the outer layer is called the crust. And then later, I talked about how the crust is actually made up of plates. They don't move very fast, but those plates are always moving. As they move, they bump up against one another or move away from one another. This doesn't have to happen just at the edges of the plates. Sometimes it happens at small cracks or faults in the middle of the plates. When we can actually feel the plates move, we call that an earthquake. The ground is moving and we can feel it. Those three forces, volcanoes, sediment deposition, and crustal deformation are constructive forces. They put earth material where it wasn't before. So what about those destructive forces I mentioned earlier? Destructive forces make landforms by taking away material. There are two primary destructive forces, weathering and erosion. Both of these forces are very powerful. Both can happen slowly or quickly. Weathering is when big rocks are turned into small rocks. There are two types of weathering. Physical weathering is when rocks are actually broken up into smaller pieces. This often happens when water seeps into a crack and freezes. The expanding water breaks the rock. This can also happen when a tree or other plant grows in a crack in a rock. The roots expand and the rock is broken. Tree roots are pretty powerful. In addition to physical weathering, there is also chemical weathering. This takes place through chemical reactions. These reactions cause the rock to rust or dissolve. Chemical weathering is very powerful. Huge cave systems, such as Mammoth Cave, were formed by water reacting with rock, such as limestone. The second type of destructive force is erosion. Erosion is when earth material uh, such as rock, sand, and soil is actually moved. This movement might take place by wind, water, or just plain old gravity. As you can see here in this picture of the Grand Canyon, erosion is quite a powerful force. Rivers, both big and small, are also formed by erosion. Once water starts to flow, watch out! Erosion is taking place. The Earth is pretty amazing. It's covered with landforms that are also pretty amazing. These landforms and the forces that cause them are also pretty amazing. The Earth, our home, is really, really quite amazing.